you know, so, I mean, I, I coined it the, uh, I have shared about it before, but I'll share it again. I call it the, the, I call it the spiritual warrior attitude, I think, uh, of the thing, you know, like, what you resist persists. What you resist, you experience, yeah? And uh, I've shared this before, but I'll share it again. One of the most enlightening things I, I heard from Hawkins, Hawkins was not able to take anaesthetic was not able to take anaesthetic. Um, and, uh, and he shared a few things which were so enlightening to what's possible, uh, which was that, uh, so he, he, was, uh, he was in his, I guess, in his backyard, whatever it is, with an electric saw, and he chopped his thumb off. Mm. So, and, I, and he was like, he was very advanced. So this thing of not resisting anything that occurs in life, and then when you're very good at it, i.e. do, I mean, for me, like, that is like the field of feelings. So each time anything, anything happens, to fully experience it and not to make a story about it, is having, and I was the opposite of that, I was an addict, which is never feel and think. Mm. I was an addict my whole life, never feel and think. So that means that if there was a pain, if there was loss, if there was anything, then I would think a lot of how I could escape that pain and do the thing. So donuts, whatever it was, you know, uh, would be it. So what's the 100% the opposite? And so I, you could say I was resisting life all the time. I was in my thinking and never wanting to feel, ever, anything uncomfortable. I didn't want to feel it. So that's like 100% resistant. And if you resist what you resist you experience and what you resist a lot you experience very heavily yeah and uh, so and then he said he went into this thing and he was taken and he was doing the, he was having this course of miracles lesson actually go you're not a body you're free for you as god created me he was so he's having probably the, the uh, i think he was saying the angelic realm was repeating that to him he's not his body and then he went into the operating tail and you know he had to tell the surgeon that no anaesthetic, and he put the he put the surgeon at at, uh, at ease and say, "Don't worry, I can do self hypnosis." But he was having to do the thing of not resisting at all. So as they're cutting, uh, as they're cutting, don't resist. Allow that one hundred percent, without any thought, without any resistance. Uh, you know, as, so that was that's extremely extreme. As I'm sure you can imagine, no painkiller. So as they go, you have to 100% not resist. Okay, so not resist. And he went into a state of infinite bliss. Okay, so this is the opposite attitude to life. When anything bad happens, every time you have an opportunity to apply this attitude, which is the letting go process. Mm -hmm. But when the sh what happens when the shit hits the fan? You know and. I had I had a I had a I had a few ex well I had a few experiences. One was not me doing it. One was Grace. One was when I saw one of my teachers of enlightenment in Brixton, where I came in because I didn't want to go to that place. So I had this gout attack, and he said, "What? Who are you? And what are you?" And I said, "There's a witness sir, and he asks, what's, a, what's, what's witnessing the witness sir?" And the whole world dissolved in infinite light. And when I came out of that. You know, there was no, there was no gout. It had gone, and it was like in in, in a field of oneness and ecstasy, and bliss. So that all disappeared in in a microsecond. Everything and the world transformed in a microsecond. So that's what's possible if you don't resist into what you experience. But also, I got to try and practice that thing of not resisting stuff when the shit hits the fan. You know, because you're doing your general stuff, and I've had some some great experiences, because I was so inspired by Hawkins, you know, I, and I know from my own experience, and you'll know from my, to the extent you resist, to that extent you experience suffering, mm. uh, whatever it is. So I remember, you know, I, I was still quite bonkers in the early days when I was exposed to Hawkins, and I still had my, my food addiction going, even though I was aware of Hawkins, and they said, don't eat bananas, you've got kidney failure, and so I went out straight and bought a bag of bananas and ate them. 
and uh, they had a, had a blood test and said you have to come into A&E straight away, you know, you're at risk of a heart attack. And I came into A&E, I didn't want to go into A&E because I was still quite mad at that time. But, uh, and probably some of you might know, but with high potassium they have a needle, I think, I can't remember it, it looked this big. It looked this big, not the tiny little ones. It looked, and I, I could have been imagining it wrong, but it looked like this big. And I'm guessing it's a heart attack, so they have to get the needle straight up. So I saw this big needle, and I thought, okay, well, if Hawkins can do operations without um, thing, I'm not going to resist. As, as they plunge that thing in, like, don't resist, 100% experience it without any resistance, any thought. Like, well, welcome it like, you know, like want it to happen, not, not in a dualistic fashion, but have no resistance to what's happening. And, and I started to lose consciousness going off into bliss. I wasn't able to go to bliss because they started trying to wake me up because they were afraid I was having a diabetic attack. And they're trying to give me sugary drinks, which was quite funny because I'm over it. I'm a sugar addict. So, um, so that was the thing, and I go, it does work. And I also have one other thing of this, when the shit hits the fan, don't resist. Okay, I have another example of this. I've got, it's an interesting example because I used to wake up in those early years with cramps in the morning. I thought, well, okay, here's an opportunity to not resist, to welcome a cramp as it starts. And it was quite enlightening learning to apply the don't resist, 100% welcome, without any thought. Don't make a story, just welcome the energy 100% with zero resistance. It's an attitude, and it's an attitude that you, you develop a lot if you do it under extreme circumstances. Because if you, because somehow the consciousness matures when you do it with something very extreme, and you get to those, ex, those spiritual states, and there's a, there's a knowingness, and there's a, an affirmation that the only reason that there was experience was because of resistance. So the other one was, um, Oh, cramps. That was a great one for learning. So I don't know if people have had cramps in the morning, but you sort of get a split-second awareness that a cramp is about to happen. I don't know if anyone, you know. But in that, it's like almost before thought. It's like something knows a cramp attack is about to happen. And I found that in that split second, and I don't think it's a conscious decision, it's due to the, this thing of not resisting. It's like somehow one doesn't resist and is welcoming that thing in the split second is about to happen and the cramp would disappear. It wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. You knew that was grace and it, you just didn't experience anything. And then there was other mornings which weren't as good. And then it was like a cramp's about to happen and resistant happens. Like resistant, I'll explain it. It's like, oh, something's saying I don't want this to happen. And there's like a thing like, I, I'm trying to push this away. Uh, that's how, I mean, I'm trying to describe something, but it's like, you feel something's going to happen and you're resisting. It's like you don't want it to happen and, you f and you're mentally not wanting it to happen. And in the split second that that happened, I got a cramp. And then when I tried to go into, it was quite funny, when I tried to, after it started happening, tried to do the non-resistance, it was, it was more or less impossible to do it. It was very difficult because I was in the middle of the cramp and it seemed like the program unfolded. So I had, I had a cramp and I was limping around. But I had all these mystical experiences and it was developing through years and years. It was almost like an affirmation of like, you're just adopting this attitude not to resist life. And you're also getting what I call shit hits the fan moments where you're also getting great opportunities to have this non-resistance attitude. And then sometimes you get it right, and then the miraculous happens, sometimes you don't, and it's, it's, it's more messy. So, um, but I wanted to share, you know, the thing, and I'll just end on this. It was also very, very inspiring. And this is one of Hawkins' stories, but I think of this thing of not resisting, uh, I just want to share it, and having this attitude, which I've coined the spiritual word, but this attitude of don't go into thoughts and welcome anything happens. Like I always had this idea, if a bus is going to run over me, let go of the story and fully welcome it as the bus is running you over. Don't try and be like, I hope this isn't happening, I'm trying to wish, wish it not be there. You know, I think you probably just jump out of body, probably if you get it right, and not experience anything. But, um, yes. 
the thing of like non-resisting. And he shared something which is very, very interesting. Sometimes non-resisting, your life can depend on being able to non-resist ASAP. Like, and this was a great, great story. And as you develop this thing, and you get these spiritual miraculous experiences of when you non-resist, like the miraculous can happen. But I also I shared my story of when you do resist, uh, you know, you, you're at the effect of the programs that are happening. But anyway, so he went in, 